Um, please welcome Andrew Banks, who's talking as, to us about engaging schools with energy. Thank you, Andrew. Thank you. Thank you very much for having me here today. My name is Andrew Banks. I'm the Sustainability Coordinator at Melbourne Girls College. And I would like to acknowledge the Wurundjeri people as the traditional owners of the place on which we meet, pay my respects to their elders past and present, and most significantly acknowledge the sustainable way in which they care for this country for 40,000 years. Um, I'd also like to begin by acknowledging the context in, in which we meet. Um, as Will said this morning, we're living in a knowledge era where the average student with a smartphone has more processing power than the Apollo mission that managed to land a man on the moon. We understand the drivers of climate change, but critically we also know the, the way that we can limit it. We're dealing with a problem that is so huge that people are so easily pushed to climate fatigue, and it seems easier to push it to one side because it's too hard to actually engage with it. Yet climate change is one of the increasing areas of concerns in student wellbeing surveys and, and issues with mindfulness. So it is something that we are obliged to actually address. We're living in a country which consumes more coal per capita than any other country in the world, and we are the fifth top consumer of electricity. These are not statistics that we should be proud of. Yet as educators, or and as educators, we are mandated by FISO and other frameworks to build global citizens of our students to encourage teacher leadership and to engage students in their, leading, in their learning. Hence, my Ed talk today is engaging students with energy. Now, I'm a biologist, so not a physicist, so there's been a steep learning curve in learning about all of the electronics of this technology that I'm going to talk to you about today. But I am by far no means an English teacher, so looking at this title, I'm thinking, should we have a one log KC? Are we engaging students with energy? Are we engaging students with energy? <laughs> um, so, I work at Melbourne Girls College, and, and today my mission um, is to fit as many energy puns into 10 minutes as possible. Um, but I recognise that I'm talking to a powerful group, and I want to encourage you to reflect on not only your own power use, but the power that you have to actually make the necessary changes and to actually inspire students to actually act rather than scare them into saying it's too hard, you are only 14 years old, you have no impact on the global context in which you live. So, I'm after a volunteer. Sadly, with all the talk of technology, we've been let down. I've had a laptop sitting here for an hour and a half and it's just run out of batteries. It seems like a catastrophic change. Um, disaster, but can I still get a volunteer from the audience to demonstrate our technology? Is there anyone out there who is great? Oh. Yes, and I've got Nathan, I've got all the stuff. So, Nathan, can you come up to the front because Nathan's going to run out of run out of power. Here's another power plant for you. Um, into this talk now. I've, I've talked to to Caleb and Potsy over there. Apparently, these projectors are 1.5. Kilowatts, 1,500 watts. Uh, this presentation is going to absolutely only run for 10 minutes, I believe. Um, so we could do a calculation about like how many watt hours this will actually be. So unfortunately, Nathan, we can't show, because of the laptop catastrophic value there, how much power you're producing. But if you start generating, what's actually happening here is that there is a motor that our students have actually built onto the side of this device here. And so as Nathan's actually rowing, he's actually inducing a current in that motor and we can use this as a tool to actually tell students about energy that generators are just uh, motors in reverse. So if you spin a motor, it actually generates a current. You might not be able to see at the back there that we've got four 12 volt truck batteries there, that's 48 volts all together. And so that then runs into this very fancy box and up to this laptop, which has had me gone to sleep on me. Um, and that would be measuring how much Nathan is actually producing there. So, by the end of 10 minutes, the laptop might actually be working. Um, I think it will be Andrew. <laughs> 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 okay. Let's see, can you click over for the moment? Oh my goodness, this is where. So, what you, what you can see on this screen here is ergo number one. Nathan, can you put your back into it, please? <laughs> you can see a little dial. I've just met Nathan. Um, it's moving out. That's showing how much power Nathan is actually.
actually generating now, and in the little taco that should be flicking around, if this is my rollers that will be flicking around like anything, um, you can actually see how much energy is producing. So here is a very clear le le fetching tool to show the difference between power and energy, right? So the more power we invest, the faster the energy will actually accumulate. And when you're ready, if you're feeling a little bit tired, then, then not to jump. I mean, anybody throughout this talk can please come up and, and have a go. Obviously, we've got the capacity here to run four ergos. So my challenge now is when I actually ask you to do this, if she has uh, legitimately got a good reason not to uh, be rowing. Um, but we have the tools in our schools to actually measure devices that are relevant to students. And when we turn this on, you might be able to see a little power meter there that shows exactly how much power that is. I mean, I'm jumping ahead in my presentation now, but um, there was a fantastic campaign. If I was to ask you to save water, do you think you'd be able to do it? If I was up to ask you to think of a good amount of water that you might like to use in one day, do you think you'd have an idea? Would you turn to the person next to you and without saying anything, show them how much one litre of water is? Okay, what about 10 litres? Right, it's tangible, isn't it? We can understand, and I've got a feeling a lot of you are already thinking of 155. That thing that we weren't allowed to talk about during the previous government because it was the previous, previous government's campaign. But it was a target that we could actually understand. Now, if I were to ask you to turn to the person next to you and say 100 what hours, would you have any idea where to start? This kind of technology enables us to do that. And can we flip back to that? Right. So I'm a sustainability coordinator at Melbourne Girls College. I actually started my career as an ecologist, um, working on the Nicola Mouse. So I then found that myself gravitating towards communicating science rather than actually research myself. And for the past 10 years, I've been working with these wonderful students, literally peddling for a renewable energy, renewable future. In my first year of teaching, I had a steep learning curve like so many of us did. I got thrown into teaching a technology subject and we did this amazing event called the RACV Energy Breakthrough. Now, my career was almost cut short because this technology subject was mandated to be hands-on learning. And so a nasty uh, incident with a very practical learning experience involving coming here from the Collingwood Children's Fund uh, after two weeks of sitting on the windowsill, as you probably guessed, unfortunately exploded and shattered design technology room 110. And so at least now I can say I've left my legacy on the 1960s concrete stucco ceiling of that classroom as it happened you have shattered the window. But as a contract teacher, not only should I have my contract renewed, um, but here I am standing before you today talking about energy and the power of people you know, you know, and being able to make the changes that we need to address climate change. So, I quickly realised that in order to save the thing that I love, I needed to engage the students that I so much respect to make energy relevant to them. Okay? I've got a little price for you. Could you all look under your seat? Have a quick look under your seat. Can I look under my seat? <laughs> <laughs> and Potsy, could you just play that video there? Has anybody found an envelope? Oh, we've got a winner! Come on down! That right there, so. <laughs> Congratulations. This can provide endless possibilities. It can create light and jobs. Delivering $6 billion in wages for Australians. It reduces steel and powers our homes, as well as our economy. Injecting $40 billion each year. And we can now reduce its emissions by up to it's hot. Isn't it amazing what this little black rock can Okay, if anybody wants to come over and take over from Noel, Chris, you're here. What did you, what did you find in like, your class? Okay, and it's coal. Yeah, and what colour is that coal? Black. It's black green. Black coal, oh yeah, same with my geology teacher. Sorry about that. Um, has anybody seen that campaign before? Um, it's... What? This, people sometimes ask me, they say, Andrew, you know, you've reached the pinnacle, you've got a kick cut with your school's logo on it. What keeps you going? 
and I say to them, this is what keeps them going. Right? We are up against, in terms of winning the battle, right, we are up against a powerful lobby group who has got a lot of funds behind them to um, keep coal burning this country. And so thank you, Chris, for that, for delivering that back. You don't have to hang on to that. Round of applause for Chris. And Uh, in 2015, the Minerals Council of Australia actually came up with that campaign. Coal is amazing. had a hashtag. Fortunately, it got the who was out trended. Um, in Victoria, do we get our energy from black coal? No. Unfortunately, brown coal, which is the younger cousin of black coal, hasn't been compressed so well. So when you burn it, it actually reduces far more emissions than actually black coal does. That poster is an amazing poster produced by Climart, um, and we're fortunate enough to curate an exhibition of it at our school at the moment. Um, so, if you had to guess, how much of our electricity comes from burning ground coal? The answer is B, sadly, and you can actually go on Look Live, and this was taken, I took this screenshot last year, 81% of Victoria's coal, uh, air electricity came from burning ground coal, right? Where do we fit into this picture? Well, this, the, the Department of Education spent $33 million on electricity last year, right? It's a huge amount, and as the leaders of these schools, you might throw your hands up and say, well, it's too hard to control this. How do we actually limit the amount of electricity we do? But if we look at the schools that are enrolled in the, in the SWEP program, the School Water and Electricity Energy Efficiency Program, the top performing school consumed only 5% of the worst performing school. There are serious things that we can actually do at a school level to inspire the people who are going to be affected by climate change far more than us to act, and we have to act by leadership. I've got a tagline of our school because we now have steam written on the side of our big building. Melbourne Girls College is steam powered, but not by coal. Thank you very much. Back to that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so just if we look at one of these projectors, which uses 1,500 watts, uh, that talk just took 250 watt hours to actually project, let alone run those two laptops. So this tool, indeed, it's not there to replace coal. Right? But it's to show us, to give us an insight into how much electricity our daily lives actually use, and hopefully it gives our students a relevant way to connect to energy conservation. Thank you very much.